Do not forget, my dearest, that the religious state is consecrated and ordained by the Most High for maintaining the doctrine of Christian perfection and the close imitation of the life of my son and that therefore the souls who in religious life are sunk in sleepy forgetfulness of their high blessing and lead a life more listless and lax than many worldly men are objects of great wrath of the lord and a severe judgment and chastisement await them than others the demon also ancient and astute serpent as he is uses more diligence in his attempts to overcome religious men and women than to conquer all the rest of worldly men. And if one of these religious fall, all hell exerts the greatest solicitude and care to prevent his using the many means which religion affords for rising from a fall, such as obedience and holy exercises and the frequent use of the sacraments. To make all these remedies miscarry and be of no use to the fallen religious, the enemy applies so many cunning snares that it would fill with terror anyone who saw them. However, much of this is recognized in the actions and artifices by which a lax religious soul tries to defend its remissness, excusing it by specious arguments if it does not break out in disobedience and yet greater disorders and faults. Be careful, therefore, my daughter, and fear so dreadful a danger. By divine assistance of grace, raise thyself above thyself, never permitting thy will to consent to any disorderly affection or movement. I wish thee to consume thyself in dying to thy passion and in becoming entirely spiritualized, so that having extinguished within thee all that is of earth, thou mayest come to lead an angelic life and conversation. In order to deserve the name of spouse of Christ, thou must pass beyond the limits and the sphere of a human being and ascend to another state and divine existence. Although thou art earth, thou must be a blessed earth, without the thorns of passion, one whose fruit is all for the Lord its master. If thou hast for thy spouse that supreme and mighty Lord, who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, consider it beneath thy dignity to turn thy eyes and much more thy heart toward such vile slaves as are the human creatures. For even the angels love and respect thee for thy dignity as spouse of the Most High. If even among men it is held to be a daring and boundless insolence in a plebeian to cast longing eyes upon the spouse of a prince, what a crime would it be to cast them on the spouse of the heavenly and omnipotent king? And it would not be a smaller crime if she herself would receive and consent to such familiarity. Consider and assure thyself that the punishment reserved for this sin is inconceivably terrible, and I do not show it to thee visibly, lest thou perish in thy weakness. I wish that for thee my instructions suffice to urge thee to the fulfillment of all I admonish and to imitate me as my disciple as far as thy powers go. Be also solicitous in recalling this instruction to the mind of thy nuns and in seeing that they live up to it. My mistress and most kind queen, in the joy of my soul, I listen to thy sweetest words, so full of spirit and of life, and I wish to inscribe them in the interior of my heart together with the graces of thy most holy Son, which I beseech thee to obtain for me. If thou give me permission, I will speak in thy presence as an ignorant disciple with her mistress and teacher. I desire, O my mother and protectress, though I am unworthy and remiss, to fulfill the four vows of my profession according to thy commands and according to my obligation, though I am so unworthy and remiss therein. 
Yet I beseech thee, give me a more full instruction, which may serve me as a guide and direction in the fulfillment of this duty and as a complement of these vows which thou hast placed in my heart.